Hi everyone. I'm very excited today to announce this, the AOS 5R. It's a 5 inch racing frame. It's the first racing frame I've ever designed and it's the first frame ever to be made with AOS arm carbon arms. I'm going to take you through this frame design on the bench. I'm going to show you some black box logs and some flight footage. I'm going to explain a little bit more about the material that makes this frame so special. So let's get into it. I'm excited to talk you through my new racing frame, the AOS 5R on the bench. Now before we start, I should make you aware that there are two versions of this frame and the version you're looking at now is the AOS 5R HD. The HD version has a slightly longer body which will fit the Sharkbite TX5R1 video transmitter. And it also has mounting for a 25 by 25 millimeter all-in-one board and mounting for a Cadex Vista if you wanted to run DJI on this quad. There is also the standard AOS 5R. That has a slightly shorter body. It's a couple of grams lighter because it's got a shorter body. And it only has mounting for a 20 by 20 M3 stack. So it's uh, more restrictive in terms of parts. But if you want to make a shorter, smaller build and you only need M3 20 by 20, then uh, you could consider that one. But for today, I'm going to talk you through the AOS 5R HD because this is the build that I'm flying right now. The geometry of the AOS 5R is quite traditional. It's got four single arms with motors in the ends. And each arm is fixed into the body by two countersunk screws. One of them goes into a standoff and one of them goes into a press nut. And neither are shared with the electronics. So if you need to replace an arm, it's just two screws, it's super easy. But it's the material that the arm is made of where I've tried to really innovate. So typical racing frames will have arms made out of standard layup carbon fiber. And in standard layup carbon fiber, 50% of the fibers run along the arm like this and 50% of the fibers run across the arm like that. And the reason that you have the fibers layered like this at 90 degrees to each other is that for most parts that provides a good balance of strength and stiffness. But for a long thin structure like a quadcopter arm all of those perpendicular fibers, the ones running across the arm, aren't really doing anything they're not really helping with strength or stiffness. So with AOS arm carbon, which is what these arms are made out of, I've actually redesigned the layup of the carbon fiber to take those perpendicular fibers and orientate some of them along the arm to give additional bending stiffness and strength, and then also orientate some of them at 45 degrees and minus 45 degrees to give more torsional strength. And the result is that AOS arm carbon arms give about 20% more flight performance than standard layup carbon fiber. And you can actually see the difference. So I'm going to show you side by side a, an arm made of standard layup and an arm made of AOS arm carbon. So if you look at these two arms side by side, you can really clearly see that the arm on the AOS 5R has a completely different layup to the standard layup arm I'm holding up next to it. You can see that um, the 45 degree layers in the middle of the AOS arm carbon arm that give it its torsional strength and you can see that it has much more unidirectional layers giving strength and bending stiffness along the length of the arm. And it's this material change that's really giving the AOS 5R its improved performance. And the great thing about changing the fiber direction is that it doesn't change the weight of the material. So this frame weighs exactly the same as it would weigh if it was made from standard carbon fiber, but it's just got that 20% extra performance basically for free in terms of weight because we've just reorientated those useless fibers that were at 90 degrees and we've orientated them into better directions, 45 degrees and straight along the arm. The top plate on the AOS 5R, obviously it has these aggressive cutouts to save weight 
It's also got a GoPro mounting pattern, which is a 32 by 32 millimeter mounting, exactly the same as the AOS 5, 5.5 and AOS 7. So if you do want to run a GoPro for any reason, you do have mounting to do that. And uh, there's a nice machined R in the back of the, uh, of the top plate. I couldn't quite fit AOS on this frame, but uh, hopefully you like that little aesthetic feature at the back there. If we look at the base plate of the frame, you can see that there are slots for you to thread two battery straps on the HD version because the body's slightly longer, or two narrower 15mm battery straps on the standard version. And this means that you can get your battery really nicely secured. And if you use a rubberized battery strap, you can even save a little bit of weight because you don't need a battery pad on this uh, piece of carbon fiber here you can use the rubberized battery strap itself as that soft material that the battery is going to uh, touch down on. You can also see that you can access the screws for the electronic stack through these slots as well. So if you do need to tighten a screw on your stack, you don't need to take the whole frame apart to do it. And I think that's a big benefit of, uh, of this design. The motor mounting is 16 by 16 up to 19 by 19 which is the same as the AOS 5 and the AOS 5.5. If we look now at the camera plates, you can see that I have these 45 degree slots. And this will allow you to mount virtually any camera that you would like at any position so that it remains well protected by this carbon fiber camera protector here but also you don't see any of the camera plate in your FPV feed. Now, the version you're looking at here is for 19 by 19 millimeter cameras, so standard micro-sized cameras. But I know that a lot of racers like to run smaller cameras, and so there is a version of the frame, I've got the top plate here, that supports 14 millimeter cameras. So if you're someone who likes to race with nano cams, then just make sure you pick up the 14 millimeter version and then um, you'll be able to fit those cameras in, no problem. The standoffs in the frame are 25 millimeter standoffs, so slightly taller than on the AOS 5 and 5.5, but I know racers tend to like to run three high stacks where you have the ESC, VTX and flight controller all in the same stack. And so having a little bit more vertical height just makes it possible to fit that three high stack in nice and easily. And you can see that on the 5R HD, there's plenty of room to fit the Sharkbite TX 5R1 video transmitter in there. So you'll have no problem if you want to use that video transmitter. And there's also space at the back for mounting a receiver. And I'm using an Express LRS receiver on this build. So now that we've been through the AOS 5R on the bench, I'm going to show you a little bit of flight footage and then a black box log analysis and resonance analysis of the frame to really dig into how the AOS arm carbon is helping this frame design perform better.
In order to give you an idea of the type of flight performance you can expect from the AOS 5R, I've put together this black box log analysis. This is about a three and a half minute flight with some freestyle type moves and also some pylon turns and fast changes of direction that might be more representative of what you might do when racing. You can see that down at the low end in terms of frequency, we have the flight movements. And I generally consider most things under about 100 hertz to be flight movements, unless you have a, a particularly flexible antenna mount or anything like that, which we don't have on this build. And then as we come up, there's a nice quiet area between about 100 and 200 hertz, which is what I always look for in a black box log analysis, because this is where you're going to typically want to put your filter cutoffs. Once we get up to sort of 200 hertz, you can see there the first bending mode of the frame is being excited, but that first bending mode is well above 200 hertz. So it's up at about 220 hertz, and that's a nice high frequency that's going to be very easily filtered out by things like RPM filters or dynamic notch filters. There might be some examples of torsional modes up around the sort of 280 hertz, but there's not much gain on those torsional modes. And it's, it's hard to know if that's actually a, a resonance being excited or just, um, just broadband motor noise. If we look at the yaw axis, we can see that there's very little in terms of noise on the yaw axis until we get up above 200 hertz. And then you can see there's this sort of broad hump of motor noise without any resonant peaks or anything like that being excited. I'd like to show you now some simulation results for the AOS 5R so that I can explain how the AOS arm carbon is contributing to the improved flight performance. So if we look at the bending modes of the frame, we find that there's one at about 220 hertz and the mode shape looks like this. And there's another one at about 280 hertz with a mode shape that looks like this. And you can see that the extra unidirectional layers of carbon fiber that are running along the arms in the AOS arm carbon are providing additional stiffness that helps push these two resonant frequencies higher in frequency by about 20% or so. So we're turning a resonant mode that might be at 180 hertz if we were using standard carbon up to 220 hertz with the AOS arm carbon. If we look at torsional modes, we can see that there are three torsional modes at about 260 to 275 hertz, and that they all involve the motor twisting on the end of the arm. And here, the layers of the AOS arm carbon that are running at 45 and minus 45 degrees are providing a lot of additional torsional stiffness over what you would get with standard layup. And that's helping push these frequencies up much higher than they would otherwise be. And that's going to make them easier to filter and allow the filtering that needs to be done to be done with less delay. And that's going to give you a more responsive feel when you're flying the quad. Well, now I think you know everything there is to know about the AOS 5R. If you're interested to try one out for yourself, I'll put a link down in the video description to where you can order your AOS 5R today. If you're a freestyle pilot, you might be more interested in the AOS 5. That's my take on a freestyle frame. I'll put a link to the launch video for the AOS 5 down in the video description as well. If you value the work that I'm doing and would like to support the channel, I'd ask you to consider checking out my Patreon. Patrons get access to my Discord server, as well as sneak peeks on the new frames and other projects that I'm working on before anyone else. And it costs just a couple of dollars a month. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.